This video is sponsored by Skillshare. I apologize for my voice, but I'm actually getting over being sick for the sickness that will not be named, otherwise it will demonetize this channel. But with that, let's get moving. Hey everyone, today we're going to be showing you how to turn this into this. So this is kind of a method that they've been using in indie games recently, where you can convert 3D models down to pixel art and blow it back up so they can kind of get high res pixel art. So we're going to be learning how to do that in Blender today. So what's very important to keep in mind when you're trying to do this effect is that it's only going to really look nice when you have simpler characters with big blocks of color. So characters with a lot of detail aren't going to look great and characters that don't have a strong silhouette or aren't like this character, for example, where they have big chunks of color and things that give them a really easy read, even when they're small, aren't going to look great in the pixel art. So that's just one thing to consider when designing or picking your character. So now what we need to do is we need to make sure that we're on the EV render engine because we're going to add a tune shader. So all this kind of shading here that occurs when we're using our normal cycles render engine or when we're not using a tune shader is going to kind of muddy up the pixel art and it's not really going to know what color to choose and you're actually going to end up losing detail in the long run. So I found that the best results come with a tune shader. So let's talk about how to do that. First of all, we're gonna switch over to our rendered view here, and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add a light. So I'm just gonna add an area light. I'm going to rotate this, and I'm going to put this over here. And then I'm just going to brighten that up there. And then I'm actually gonna take this and rotate just, just ever so slightly here so that we kind of get a bit more shading. And I'm going to turn this up to maybe 500. Great. Now let's go into the materials and look at a quick way to create a tune shader. So this only works in Eevee. This doesn't work in cycles. So if I come up here and I grab this, you can see that I have a diffuse BDSF node going into here. And you can use other shader nodes, but I find diffuse works the best. So what I'm going to do is add a shader to RGB node. So if I grab that and just put that over the top of there, it will connect those two. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this out. And then after shader to RGB, I'm going to add a color ramp. And if I drag that there, we can start to control our shadows there. And you can still see that we're getting a lot of gradation and that's not what I want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this and I'm going to hit constant. And what that's going to do is gonna give me a harsh shadow there. So then what I can do is put that back there and then I can then drag this one to the left until I get what I think is a good amount of shading on my character. And you can play with this more. And if we play it there, you can see it's a little glitchy in there, but it's doing fine. And you can adjust that lighting. And I've noticed that the smaller the white it is, like the more harsh the light is, the better it does. So if you have a big soft light, for example, like I had with that area light, it tends to kind of make those glitches appear more because it doesn't know what shadow to pick. Whereas here, let's move this up here and play forward. You can see that it's giving us a little bit more consistent results. So I'm going to go ahead and go with that. You can put any color here and that's going to affect the color that you have. So let's go ahead and I'm going to kind of put a dark red here and I've kind of saved these colors. So I'm just copying the hex codes over for time's sake. And let's put that one there and I can kind of have that pink and red going on and I don't even want that much shadow. And at this point, I may need to just go ahead and rotate my light. So I'm gonna go ahead, move my light over here a bit. And yeah, that's kind of giving me something that I like there. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to render this. So we need to create a camera. So let's go ahead, create a camera. And I think that it looks best if you use um, flat on view. So you can see here that it is just on the Y axis that I'm gonna move it back. And I'm going to move it up. I don't want to do an angle because most often not pixel art is not in an angle. So I'm trying to kind of keep that illusion will help. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make this 1080. And that way I have kind of a square comp there. We'll just move this around until we get something we like. So see how that looks when he's running. I'm going to move that a bit to the left. 
So next what we're going to do is we're going to change the resolution of our output. So we want this to match what typical pixel art is. So you can play with those sizes. Pixel art goes anywhere from 16 to 256 pixels usually. So let's go ahead. Let's just try lowering this to 100 by 100. And you can see here that it looks tiny. So let's scale in. And you can see that we have a lot of anti-aliasing here, which it doesn't normally occur in pixel art. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here to the EV tab and I'm going to go down to film. I want to turn on transparent and then here we have the filter size which is actually filtering that so we're going to set that to a really tiny number so let's do 0 0.01 and now when we hit f12 you can see that we're getting much more of a pixel art look and what we can do there is we can come back up here and we can play the resolution so if we do 16 by 16 we can get an idea of what a little 16 by 16 character would look like i think there's not enough detail there so you can play this until you find a number that you like that works for your character so I found that 64 by 64 was a good number for my character, a nice balance of kind of low res detail, but also being able to see what's going on. And you can see here that because I only have two colors, some of the colors are starting to kind of blob together. So for example, if you're designing your character, you may want to make the back legs a different color than the front leg. And those kind of little things are going to help your image look a lot better. So I actually went ahead and darkened those back appendages so that you could get a better read on the smaller silhouette. So next what we need to do is we need to go ahead and render this out. So we're going to render it out as a PNG sequence and you can just make this an 8-bit color depth and you can crank the compression up and you just want to make sure you have RGBA on and then you can choose somewhere here to export it. Then once you have that exporter, what you're going to want to do is you're going to create a new file. So let's come here, create a new file. Let's obliterate the default cube. Let's get rid of that light. We will hit Alt-R and Alt-G on our camera there. And what that'll do is reset the position. Now what we're going to do is we're going to hit R90. And then if you hit X, it'll rotate that up that way. Now we're going to hit G minus 5 Y and that's going to move it back five units. So now if we go into our camera, we can see here that it's looking straight on and it's centered onto the origin point. So what we'll do is we'll grab our camera here and we'll come up to the resolution settings and we're gonna set this by a higher resolution number. So 1080 by 1080, because we just exported a tiny 100 pixel sprite and that's not good if we wanna share it on social media. So now that we have our camera set up, we're gonna go ahead and import our image sequence. And we can do that with an add-on that comes free with Blender called Images as Planes. And if you don't have that enabled, We'll just go to your edit preferences add-ons and search planes and it'll be the only one that pops up so now let's go ahead and let's import our exported PNG sequence so here you can see I have the image sequence so I'm just gonna go ahead I'm gonna select all of those and then over here we have some options and we're gonna to want to make sure this animate image sequences option is turned on let's go ahead let's import that and let's switch over to render view and we could see that it's imported everything but that it looks really dull and that's because it's being affected by the lighting in the scenes because by default it's like a principled bdsf so let's go ahead come over here we're going to go to the shader editor and you can see here it's kind of created this automatic setup for us so let's go ahead drag our image sequence out here we're going to take our color and we're just going to pipe that into the emission node down there what that's going to do is just brighten it up so that we get kind of a one-to-one -one contrast so now what we're going to do is we're going to scale this up to match our scene and if you've done everything as i have it should all be in the origin point and just scale right up there and you can see that this looks awful because it's so blurry so then now what we can do so we can come over here to the image sequence in the shader editor and here we have this linear and this applies to the texture interpolation and we don't want linear so we're going to change that to closest and that will give us a pixel art so let's go ahead let's reduce the end frame to the amount of frames that we rendered which i'd rendered 17. if you don't know how many that was you can look up here on your image sequence and it'll tell you let's go ahead and hit play and now we can see that we have a pixel art render of our character if you want to export this as high res, then what you can do is just go ahead and since you have everything locked down here, you can go right back and export it just as you was anything else and it'll have a pixel art export. If you're looking to improve your skills as an artist, as an illustrator or designer to create more charming scenes, I recommend checking out Skillshare's courses. Skillshare offers thousands of inspiring classes for creatives and curious people on topics including illustration, design, photography, video, freelancing, and more. I've been using it for two to three years and I love it. I've improved my characters, compositions, layouts through their many design and illustration resources. They also have a great selection of 3D classes, including some made by me. Skillshare is great for beginners, pros, dabblers, and masters. It's especially great for lifelong learners who love to explore. 
I oftentimes find students asking me to help them improve their renders and a lot of times it's usually basic fundamentals like design. So watching courses like digital poster design and combining images and type for powerful visuals is a great course to really explore the basics of design and how to improve your projects and your layouts. Start learning today. The first 1,000 people who click the link will get two free months of Skillshare Premium. That's all for today's tutorial. Make sure to tag me in your creations on Instagram. I love seeing what the talented people in this community make from these tutorials, and oftentimes I'll share them to my own page. Thank you for watching.